black oil and lures sitting here frozen battery and you know I've used this thing for a couple seasons now this is electric trolling motor with a battery for a couple seasons and it's just time to repower this thing is served well but the old battery here is only giving me about 50 percent charge or so it seems like it's running out of juice a lot of that's because it's just cold as you can see we got ice here but you know instead of buying a new battery I really have looked for something gas powered uh, it's just time you know I've gotten a lot of great service but I need something better my little motor my little boat here only uses about max as out at about 10 horse 10 horsepower and I've looked high and low I've looked everywhere for a an outboard motor I, I had several criteria one I wanted to something that I can build and tinker and modify and things for myself something that didn't require welding skills something that is rugged simple easy to work on it's got to be something that works on myself I can work on it myself and what I came across is a little company called SPS North America and they sell these awesome Thailand built long tail mud motors that you can build from basically a go-kart engine that you can get from Harbor Freight now let's go on over here and let me show you what I'm talking about so as you can see you gotta have a motor here you see the power plant here the shaft there and that's gonna connect to a shaft all the way back here to the propeller all right. okay so now this is the power plant this is from Harbor Freight Predator engines 212 cc overhead valve little basically a go-kart engine it's what this is it's a six and a half horsepower you get some specs here uh, six and a half horsepower now the curious thing about this thing it's 212 cc displacement now if you get on all your if you go to Mercury or Yamaha or any of your, your major you know, outboard manufacturers a 200 you know, their 9.9 .9 horsepower engines are usually about 208 uh, cc's so and yet if you bought one of those you're going to easily pay you know twelve hundred dollars fifteen hundred dollars this little motor cost a hundred dollars from Harbor Freight you, what you do is just like Harbor Freight they usually have a once a month they have a twenty percent discount coupon that you can use and you put that coupon code either take it to the store or put the coupon code online and you will get the twenty percent off this so basically this hundred twenty dollar motor that they list you can get it for a hundred bucks it's a good value per dollar 212 cc so you're getting a motor that's as big in terms of its displacement as a a, a, a nine horsepower motor but it's a single uh, piston it's a single piston but because you have that high uh, rating with what I consider fairly low horsepower which is only six and a half horsepower there's a lot of room to upgrade to use kind of cool go-kart hot rod parts and all right safety manual such like that oh, wiring diagram this is the bolting diagram I guess mounting holds uh, nice manual and uh, some various tools like a hex wrench like a spark plug thing here probably tighten up some bolts here and there yep I can see how that works before use, fill the gas can here and add engine oil. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. This is something I was worried about. You know, all these corn oils and corn-based, ethanol-based gasolines. I just, I just don't. You know, I'm not convinced that they're the way to go. But here it says the 10% ethanol blend is okay. 
but uh, gas only, no E85, which is, I think is a, is a special sort of gasoline. So this is pretty well packaged and it arrived well from the Federal Express and uh, yeah, it looks like it's in good shape. And so next thing to do is to try to perhaps we're going to have to wait till the shaft comes in and then we'll mount this thing up and fire it up and get a little break in going. Looks One thing I will recommend that if, if you're not at home, go ahead and pre-arrange for Federal Express to hold it at the facility and you can just go pick it up there. Uh, you know, if you're going to be paying, you know, several hundred dollars for one of these units and last thing you want is somebody to just come by your house and take it because it's just sitting there on the front porch uh, or just because there's no telling when Federal Express is going to get there but anyway that's just a quick tip and that's basically what I did <coughs> all right unboxing there we have it <coughs> owner's manual wow it's actually <laughs> owner's manual here is oh I see why I was about to say the owner's manual for this is thicker than this, and I think that's because this is just this is printed out on single pages. Oh, this is good. Okay. Wow. Parts list. About the long tail. Congratulations on your purchase. Okay, Kit was originally developed in 1957 in Bangkok. Huh. Wow, it's pretty clear. Pretty clear. Right. Bolt size, right. Yep. So this is oh this is nice. This is actually nice. Simply just print it out on the uh on a, on a like a probably like a laser printer in the office or something. Okay. You can see there's a so as you can see, there's a nice little diagram of the whole thing, right? So you got the power plant here that we have here, and sits down in there, and you have the entire long shaft here, plus the coupling and the and all that. All right, enough of that. You guys don't probably don't want to see that. I'd probably sit down and read that a bunch of times, but cool. Now I get more wrapping paper for my fishing bobbers. That's why I love getting stuff like this. <laughs> I mean, I can. You know how many dozen fishing lures and bobbers that I can use <laughs> that I can wrap in this for shipping? <laughs> oh, nice. Once again, the thing that I notice about this is the same thing I noticed about the Okuma ABF-40 uh, fishing reel I had. There's a heftiness to it. It doesn't feel cheap. You know how it is when you buy something? and you pick it up and it's like you're like oh my gosh this is just some cheap thing you know I'm not getting that impression because I, when I went to pick it up at the at the Federal Express uh, Depot or whatever that thing the guy had to kind of strain him to bring it up to the door now it's hefty that's hefty this is hefty this is thick metal and so you know it's packaged in nice thick bags you know, you know, I love well thought out kits like this. See, here we have, uh, yeah, cable. Looks like a, looks like a cable that uh, I used to have when I was back in my bicycle days. I'm guessing this is the uh, you know, shaft components here. Coupling and shaft components here, probably, I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh wow! Look at this kill switch. I'm guessing that's a part of the sh part of the coupling there. See, look at there, a newspaper. I, w I wrap up all my barbers in newspaper. <laughs> so that's kind of neat, you know. He's not the only one, right? I'm not the only one, right? Okay, propeller. Two propellers. Wow. Two propellers. Uh, kill switch. Now this is this is what I'm talking about. Th th this this will save your life. If you've ever if you if you've ever seen those circle of death videos, don't run your motors without a kill switch. If you ever get thrown out of the boat, this will pull out. The motor will die. 
and you'll be safe. Because what happens is the torque from the engine, it will automatically turn the motor and guess what? It'll go around in a circle, come right back around and run over you and kill you. This has happened. I mean, you know, get your, this safety feature tells me that, that, that tells me that they really uh, want people to be safe. And the fact that you've included this, even though you know that the, the power plant doesn't have one included with it, they went ahead and put one on there for you. I like that. That's that's well. That's that's that that kind of safety is a, a good uh, thing. Let's see what else we have in here. Imagine various bolts and whatnot. Yeah, exactly what it is. Various bolts and whatnot. <laughs> Not sure what that is there, but uh, some sort of a handle there. Um, yeah, bolts, nuts, wing nuts, twist ties, various nuts and bolts. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Some sort of drive shaft component, I believe. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, you should know what this is here. This looks just like the uh, looks like the thing that'll fit uh, on the transom. The let's see what this is like. Oh wow! Again, Let me adjust the camera here. Again. Uh, it just feels hefty. I have no idea what that is. I don't even know what that is, but I would imagine if you read the manual, it'll tell you. But again, feels, oh, this is just feels he hefty. And it's simple and it's practical. Uh, it seems like you got bolts here welded on. Oh, wow, look at this. This is like, okay, I see. So once you once you put that on the transom, you'll tie that down and tighten it down here. Tighten it down here first, I bet, and I just you type it, tighten it down there. That way, there's no funny business. You got you know double locking system there, really. And you know every action has an equal opposite reaction, right? So if that's twisting this way, this is going to be twisting that way to, to tighten it up. So that's like a double lock. You know that's good there, and it's painted here. Let's see. Painted is probably looks like it's been sitting for a little while. It looks like a little. This may be brown paint. I think that's down in there. That's what it looks like. Um, a little burr there. But um, maybe that's just some. I don't know if that's surface rust or just a little bit of paint. Maybe a little bit of surface rust. But you know, you're going to be packing this with grease, so that's not really a problem at all. Again, I, I, it, there's a heftiness to it, a practical heftiness. It's beefy. It looks strong, and um, you know, see, this is a piece of angle iron there, and it looks like this piece was welded on here. Still, looks hefty. It looks looks very hefty, and that's uh, that's actually very encouraging as well. All right, let's see what we can do here. What is this here? This is, let's see, all these are just various pieces of plastic and additional uh, whatnot. I'm not sure what that was there for. Maybe they had something. Let's see. Uh, again, another hefty piece, which is pretty obvious where this is gonna fit. Oh yeah. This is definitely going to fit down onto the, uh, well, I can tell you right now where that's going to fit. Fit down in that slot, grease that up. It's painted. Again, a hefty, hefty unit. Up, down, twist. I'm guessing it's going to bolt. The engine's going to mount right here. Bolt up right here sits here and this let's see <clears throat> so there's that unit yeah, and this looks like the, sh the shaft housing 
again, thick plastic. Um, yeah, nice. Uh, yeah. Oh god, it's got bear. Wow, look at that. I don't know if you can see that down in there. Let me just take off the camera, see, let you see. What? You may not be able to see that, but that's a ball bearing. Forgive the squirrels. They're doing their thing. It's it's getting late in the autumn. Ball bearings. That's that little donut-like thing you see. Just look at those ball bearings. Those are those are ball bearings. They're not cheap bushings. Those are actually real ball bearings. So the shaft's going to be on a ball bearing. That's that's kind of neat. And I'm guessing. My guess is that's what this unit is, is going to fit down in there somehow. And probably going to ride on that ball bearing. A couple, it seems like, I don't know if that's one or two ball bearings. Uh, maybe just one. But that's that's kind of nice. That That's, again, that's kind of nice. Again, this is a heavy, it, it's heavy. It's It looks durable. It's, it's this flange here that's been mounted here. And um, this will do. Now I'm guessing this is the serial number, so you may want to write that down. If you buy one, excuse me, excuse me. If you want, if you buy one of these, you may want to write down that serial number here before you mount it all up. This right here is uh, I'm not sure what that is, but uh, maybe that's uh, hmm. I'm guessing that's grease cups, where the grease cups can go if you have the grease cups. Um, you can add some grease in. The, oh, yeah, that's it. You could get you some pliers to take that off, right, when it comes time. Take that off. Squirt some axle grease down in there. And, uh, and, th and there you have it. And that's where the tires here go. Uh, again, looks like a very durable, well-made, rugged, dependable, gonna get you home in the worst conditions possible type of thing. It looks like, it looks like something that comes off of a Navy destroyer. Looks like something that'd be in the engine room of a Navy destroyer. I remember going down to the USS Alabama once, and the whole the whole ship has stuff that looks like this in it. You know, beautiful ship. That's what this reminds me of, and it's nice to see that kind of heavy-duty, uh, perhaps, engineering in, into a simple unit that's going to just hook up to a go-kart motor, uh, because there's nothing simple about marine technology. Uh, it doesn't matter how simple it is. Just because it's simple doesn't mean it is uh, cheap or, or uh, substandard in terms of saving your life when you're out there on the water. So anyway, let's get to, uh, let's open up the manual. And see uh, and, and, and look from there. There's a lot of cellophane. <laughs> My goodness. And so that's just the outer stuff. We, we still got to get through all the cellophane. So, what that means is this is really well packaged and thought out. Uh, probably using the lightest materials that they could to cut down on the weight to save you money on shipping, but plenty strong enough to keep the unit safe. Look at that. There's Basically have it all undone now. Looks like a galvanized pipe. Uh, S Swamp Runner by SPS. Looks like it's been spray painted on. That's pl that's plenty fine. I'm, you know, um, this is definitely a what I consider to be a utilitarian uh, system, which is what I love. I want it simple. I want it easy for me to work on. And you know, that's what I'm interested in. And uh, looks like we got some sort of polish here. I don't know if that's galvanized or stainless. Kind of hard for me to tell the difference. And you have something here. Yeah, I guess that's there's the shaft. You wheel it around. Uh, there's the shaft there. Uh, looks like there's some kind of grease already in it. So you have an outer shaft and an inner drive shaft. And I'm guessing. That's what that unit we pulled out before will fit and lock onto there. And that's what's going to be spinning the propeller down at the end. And so um, what I'm interested to see now 
is is how this balances out and I'm sure that they've fixed that out and thought about it but here we have one again one of these little units seems like we can just oh wow listen this one just comes out look at that let's just see what it looks like that's what that looks like down in there not sure if that's the way it's supposed to look or not but uh, but um, I guess that's just the well there and so I, I don't know uh, grease gets down in there I guess that's where you put your grease again simple design just simple there's, there's nothing complicated about it looks like the uh, shipping they they padded that up very very well but it looks like even with the padding the shipping still is got to that part there it's, you know it's not you know the little ball bearing that was in it, it's not quite in there looks like it's bent a little bit but that's not but considering how heavy this is and how you know that the shipping companies can just be murderous to to packages sometimes uh, you know again just like the harbor freight trailer I built out here that you saw I'm amazed that that it just arrived all in one package and nothing was falling apart or anything it was you know it just arrived pretty well so so I'm happy now it's time to start we need to gonna I'm gonna take some time read through the manual and then we'll start uh, mounting the motor and uh, mounting it to the boat. Wow, the shaft is tapered. We finally got the end of it off. And you see, there's a, I guess that's the keyway. Oh. Wow, it turns freely. Wow, it turns very freely. I'm not sure what kind of bushing that is, but that's another bushing uh, on the end there. Seems, like, seems durable. I guess we'll have to just, yeah, there's a little washer there. I guess that's where the propeller's going to fit, so. All right. It's time to get to work. Time to, uh... Looking at the diagram again, you, you know, two screws, three screws, plus a larger screw. I have one screw, one screw, plus the larger screw, and no secondary screw. So I'm guessing that's just a change in the design somewhere. They may have found that, well, it's not all that necessary to have that third one there. That's my guess. And that hole, when I look down in here, that, is, that hole seems to be so that you can get some grease down in there where that keyway is, where it'll be fitting over there. So there's some grease down in there uh, helping to, I guess, perhaps help to lubricate, get it better. So uh, it looks like that's it. So what it, the manual here recommends that I get some Loctite, uh, medium strength Loctite to set the to set the Allen wrench screws in place, and tighten to a maximum of five pounds of uh, torque. So we're gonna have to make a quick run to the hardware store to get some Loctite and maybe pick up a, a torque wrench. So we'll be back when I get that done. Bottom, so we'll go back into the bottom. And always get you some gloves here. Dab a lock tight on there. There we go. And that will suffice. Whenever you're doing any kind of a kit like this, keep your trash bag or trash can right here. Keeps everything nice and neat so you don't have to be doing a bunch of cleanup work later. Every time you open something, plastic bag, just put it in the trash bag and you just take that to the to the dump. If you have if you have trouble slipping this over the uh, PTO Take you some scissors or something, pull down, go down the edges of that, because usually what the, there's some burrs in there or something. <laughs> and then, and 
it's just not clean. So do that and it should slip all the way until you see that come through there. And that's good. Now we have that on there. And now we'll just take our Allen wrench, tighten down. We've got we have our Loctite in there. And uh, I'll tell you what, do it the fast way here. That fits over there. Now here's one confusing thing about the thing. It says here step three to put the coupling over the the, 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 the shaft of the engine then grease the coupler shaft with well with axle grease until into the flanged end until the coupler housing uh, flanged ends of the coupler housing okay that makes sense yeah the coupler housing is the green thing we're gonna fit over this so you're not gonna put any grease on this the grease is gonna go onto that thing and that will grease will get all into there and as it works in it will be alright. Okay. So now that these are tightened, now we will grease the coupling shaft with some lithium grease. You know, if you have, if you've done any kind of work, like I had to buy this stuff for the trailer, boat trailer, this is number two lithium grease. You can get it from any hardware store, rather you can get it from any auto parts store. The manual here says number zero, number one, or number two lithium grease. So this is what we're going to use. It's the pink stuff. Or it's not pink, it's purple. And it, uh, ugh, it's thick. Again, another reason to wear your gloves. This is the coupling housing. This fits over there. We're going to fill it up here until about a third, third about finished. So we're just gonna have we got a little stick here this foam is charged so it'll stick to anything so be careful not to get that foam down in there get you a little stick like this any kind of a stick just gonna punch it down in there and Punch it down in there. Again, about third full is what it says, so you don't want to overdo it with the with the with the stuff. Maybe a little bit more might be enough. Because you're going to be periodically putting more um, grease in here. Okay, and there we go with that. If you want to, you can just, again, the advantage of wearing the gloves, you get, you know, you get to do that and okay, there we go with that. Uh, is that about a third? Yeah, it's about a third. Don't overfill it because you'll You'll just heat. It'll just build up more heat, and heat makes friction, and that'll just damage the unit uh, over the over the long term. So you, you just what you want to do is just about third full. You can always add more grease here and here, so it's not a problem if you don't put enough. If you're going to error, error on. Well, just don't error. Just put about a. Just, just follow the instructions and do what the instruction says. <laughs> Are you see what I'm saying? All right. So now. We're going to slip this on, but first, we're going to change gloves. Best thing you can do is buy you some gloves. Go to the Wally World, buy you some gloves. You're going to be using grease and stuff. Um, you can, again, with the tip for the trash bag, you can just throw them away, put on a new pair of gloves, and you just keep going. for sure. We need to make sure that this is in the correct orientation. Make sure the Zerks here are on an up position, okay? Make sure these are pointed up because the whole point is that you're going to be putting grease down in there from time to time. And so the instructions say just use the bolts with the lock washers. And there's another set of bolts in here that are, there's four bolts with uh, 
there's four bolts in here with lock washers and um, uh, flat washers so I'm not sure the instructions here don't specify which one and so that always makes you wonder say okay am I using the right ones am I I don't know maybe I am maybe oh I think I get it the other ones are probably gonna go here I think these are correct ones just looking at the picture and when in doubt compare the pictures okay so um, you know this is the thread here and there's no gap see th those wouldn't work because they're just too long I can eyeball it and see these look right so that's what we're gonna that's how we're gonna proceed looks like I've lost a washer somewhere I know I have another washer around the house somewhere so and so what we need to do first is uh, get our old friend WD-40 to help uh, prevent rust and whatnot. oh goodness on these bolts just like we use Loctite on the other one we're actually using something that'll help it because we're going to be using this in a marine environment right so we're using something anything to help it keep it prevent it from uh, seizing up on us and rusting out and whatnot so put a little just get an old 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 school WD-40 that's all I have so you know there's probably any number of better lubricants and uh, rust, rust protectants on the market but that's what I have so that's what I'm going to use for now Oh, come on. Give me all this trouble. That's the thing about these things. Uh, really would be better. Really should have set up the 2x4s and just set this thing up on the bench. And I think I'd have been a lot happier. In fact, once I get these in, I may call it quits for the day. I, I thought I could get it done, but it's time for me to head... I'm working the evening shift today, so I'm going to have to uh, call it quits a little early. Oh, there's the other washer. Thought I had lost it, but and uh, okay. So let's tilt her up here on end, align everything, and that should be it. So the way you want to do this is almost like you're changing tires on a car, right, or whatever. You're going to start here and one, two, three, four, come down here to the opposite side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just so you just keep doing that, and that'll make it. That'll bring that whole thing flush. It'll singe it up, and bring it flush. So just keep doing it. Remember this unit? I had it on. I forgot. I didn't take it off. I didn't follow the instructions so well. So what I've done here is I have a Q-tip swab with some uh, denatured alcohol on it. I'm trying to clean off those threads. Now that that's clean, you know. Denatured alcohol is a good way to clean metal. Just get you some. You can get it from a Wally World anywhere if you have to clean it up for any reason. And so what we're going to do now is put some anti-seize compound uh, on the, to this unit here. Some of the Loctite. All right. This long flat tool seems to first be a spark plug wrench here. Um, but they have this flat tool here so you can have a way to put this in. So put it on like so. We're going to put it in here and see if we can't thread it in. I'm not sure if this is a reverse threaded unit or what. <clears throat> so we're going to put it in here. But let's just see. We'll just keep going. And Whichever way the engine runs, yeah, so it is just regular threaded. I'm guessing the equal opposite reaction. So if the engine is 
Yeah, so if the engine is moving here, that, that'll tighten. Yeah, it'll tighten as the engine is running. So no worries, it, it threads like so, all right? That's on there, the lock tights down in there. Let me get a better view here with the camera. You may not be able to see that, so you can get a little bit of sunlight in it, all right? And uh, let's move on to the next step. Time to get this onto the boat. I just realized what this is for now. <laughs> so you can squirt some oil down in here just like the rest of the of the Turks. It's just a small mini Turk. <laughs> nice idea. This uh, little unit came off, but there's another in the package of bolts. There's another um, I saw it in here. There's another let me go see if I can find that other smaller package of bolts here that had some extra had an extra couple of nuts and screws in it and I'm thinking that that's what that was. Uh, this one just fell off. I'm, I know what it is. It's just there's a it fits right on top there, and uh, there's a little screw here and a washer that should be in there, but it isn't. So you may want to check that with your unit uh, if you get it and that falls off. In fact, that's exactly what happened. Uh, the unit just fell off because it wasn't. I had been unscrewing it and playing with it. It just fell off down here in the grass. So just be mindful that that's a little screw there that could come loose, and you don't necessarily want that to happen. It's not going to hurt anything. At least you, you know it's you know when you, whenever you do these little kits like this, you always find out little things like that that helps you know the unit better and how it's designed, so that when things do go wrong, you know what to do, what cost it, why, and how to fix it. To go no that way. Uh, but fortunately, our boat already has that. If your transom is thin and it doesn't have that wooden backing there, go ahead and put something like this. Now we can find another piece of plywood or something that's thinner than that to fit there but we only have so much uh, space here and so what we're going to do is line it up here just make sure here you got this lined up with the with the uh, drain plug there uh, and, and there we go and it's just a matter of uh, tightening up it's just like on my trolling motor you know we're not going to go too crazy in it, but and then you're going to pull these back. Okay, pull that back, pull that back, and tighten that up. And that's going to lock it. And that's nice to have there. That's a nice feature, really. Okay, right. So we'll go get our wrenches. Just of a wrench. Oh, come on now. No. All right, so that is locked in place. It's flush. That that lock on there is great. I like it. Good stuff. Now from the looks of this, this looks reversible. This looks like you could take this and turn it around, unthread the uh, eyes here, make it reverse, and thread it through the other side. Uh, the only thing I would worry about, if the motor's sitting here, uh, you might have more weight aft and to, to, to balance the, the thing out more. You may want it forward, so you may need to just turn, perhaps you need to just Rethread these back here, and um, and and go from there. Wow, we have even more little Turks here. This is <laughs> nice little details to this simple technology that's just so well thought out. A little grease in there. You can jet some more Turk some, some grease down in there with a grease gun, I would imagine, and that gets that uh, nice and secure. And, but uh, here we are with the uh, mount, the motor mount. Definitely going to want to take this off. And <clears throat> okay. 
this is nice because now we have up down motion and right to left that's that's kind of nice again simple technology I'm probably gonna have to load that up with some grease let's just check the manual catfish bait <laughs> this is nasty stuff anyway it's not about catfish bait review but <laughs> It's always out here because it's too stinky to keep in the house. It attracts dogs, so those of you who are interested in canine attractant for, for maybe your hunting coyotes, hook, uh, give, me a, give me a call. I can hook you up with some of this stuff that I make. And it's good if you have mice this time of year inside your house. Uh, this is a good mouse bait, rat bait, where you're going to catch mice with mouse traps. So give me, give me a call. I'll hook you up with some of that. But anyway, let's see. Mount some... Yeah, grease the shaft and the gimbal, insert the shaft, yep. And apply a small amount of medium strength Loctite to the gimbal shaft thread, threads, reinstall the washer nut into the gimbal shaft directly out. So, so now we're moving to putting most of the tools, so we're moving our tools and most of our gear to the boat now because it's now time to start mounting everything up. So, let's go get our grease, let's get our little stick that we grease everything with, and uh, we'll be right back. Loctite here. And a little Loctite here. And that'll, that'll move itself on around there. Again, the medium grade Loctite. Don't get the permanent stuff, just get the medium grade stuff. Kind of help hold it. And, uh, oh, gosh, this stuff's just so nasty. Tell you what, I'm just going to use the glove and uh, we're going to grease it here. Gonna grease the shaft up with this. Be careful about running your hands around the edge of that thing there. And while we're at it, we need to grease up my oars on the boat, which use exactly the same system. small boats like this get you some oars folks it's the ultimate backup my personal opinion is when you get out on the water three forms of backup three forms of propulsion primary power backup power backup for the backup we're gonna have the motor oars and a paddle uh, get that from an old army rifle commander says uh, he would never let his men horse around on the tanks and stuff always have three points of contact on the tank uh, you know because you can slip break an ankle break a neck break a collarbone and you're just basically useless so uh, you get out there on the water the motor fouls the oar falls off I mean you <laughs> you're up the creek you're literally up the creek uh, no form of propulsion to get you back so what you need three forms of propulsion always primary power secondary power backup power now you know a lot of boats already have a motor and an electric trolling motor but this is going to be my trolling motor from now I mean you can just use the oars to position get where you need to go human power we have the uh, of course we have the paddle and you're ready to go just in case anything goes wrong so anyway now this is sort of a diversion a sidebar here and uh, sort of a sidebar and so we're just greasing up our oars here <laughs> and put them in but see as you can see the oars is basically using the same uh, it's using basically the same basically uses the same idea as the uh, as the gimbal here <clears throat> so it does exactly the same thing all right so once again make sure the Turks are up nuts and bolts here are facing upward okay and there we go Alright. That's 
going well. Okay. Easiest way to screw that in there. Just use the just like that. And that'll Tighten enough, it's not a death grip, but just tighten enough to where it still rotates freely. All right, there we go. Next, we have our handle, it slips right on in. Uh, the manual here says they recommend right handed performance or a right handed situation here uh, for, the, for the Thailand style thing. Uh, Well, I can see that you're going to have to be using both up and down and left and right. That's that's interesting dynamic that you just don't see all the time. That's a very interesting dynamic. But anyway, there you go. Consequently, the adjustable wrench is the easiest, uh, most sensible way to, to do this, this entire unit. Keep one hand on this thing. I'm telling you, don't want to lose your motor. So now you have that on there. And I suppose we're going to put the flat washer. We're going to put our lock washer. Oh, come on now. Don't give me all this trouble. Lock washer. And then we're going to see if we can't thread this thing somehow. I have pretty, yeah, okay, we're definitely going to have to go get the wrenches for this. I'm not going to be worrying about some stinking, there we go, so we have one bolted. You get that one bolted in there, now you can kind of hands off. Now if you were doing this with a 13 horse motor, forget it. I, I, there's no way I'd do that. I'd get me a, a, a you know, a, 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 you know a, an engine hoist. And just jack that thing up inch by inch until it, you move it on into place and set it down. I wouldn't even dare try to do something like that without the uh, uh, so you're gonna just there you go. See, you just wiggle it, wiggle it, waggle it, and it'll find its place. All right, there's that. There's that. Starting to look like something, folks. Really? I've been waiting for this part for a while now. That, 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 that throttle looks almost like it comes from Thailand or something, right? <laughs> but uh, there you go. My guess it just fits right there, and you can just you just use your hand. That way, you see the the, the motorcycle grip thing. Uh, I just you know you sitting there holding it seems like you can cramp up easily, but this seems like a much simpler way to go you're just resting your hand and you're just you know you're just using your hand to, to to throttle it up or down okay so the manual here says uh says that the uh just bolts right on up um ten millimeter bolt here And there's a recessed cup underneath there, and it seems to that seems that'll keep it from slipping. So we don't want. I'm not going to lose that bolt. So we're going to just uh, try it here. And I can see that. Yeah, that feels really nice. It just kind of cuddles right there in the hand, and it just feels nice. Next comes the throttle. This reminds me of my bicycle building days. And so uh, this should be a. This actually feels pretty. Um, Yeah, this 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 all looks very familiar to me. You're gonna have to put the sleeve in here because uh, you're gonna need you gotta have a way to protect the uh, 
thing. So what we're going to do now is put a little oil, or maybe a little WD-40 or something, onto the cable here to keep it from rusting and corroding. Again, for this application, I'm just going to use WD-40. Just gonna sort of grease it on up this way. Just all the way down. First of all, make sure you have it set so the. That's why I had so much difficulty earlier. Make sure you know if you just look at the pictures, the pictures are accurate. Make sure that this is set uh, to the inside. So there's, this only goes on one way, right? This cable here is meant to fit right in there. So it needs to fit right in there. So it only goes on one way. So just so you know, and that will be like that. 10 millimeter bolt. And there we have it. Okay, so that's on there. This will fit. Right in there. We'll just pull that back out, pull it straight. The line goes there. Again, I'm going to put some WD-40 on that. Come on now, don't get in all this trouble. There we go. Now ah, this makes more sense. Now, we're going to thread this in back through like so. It's been a long time since I worked on bicycles. But anyway, there you go. Just feed that back in. It'll just follow its own path and like that, like that. And there we go. What we do is just pull that back through, and there you go. There you go. Just bam. There's it. And there's it. See, that's neutral. Bam. Nice. That makes more sense. All right. So we're working on the throttle link. It's just about got it ready to go and uh, ready to mount this up. Now what we may have to do, uh, I don't want to, but we may have to just take off the tailpipe here. We may have to take this off to get into it. But it looks fairly roomy in here, so we may be able to, uh, the truth be told, what's going to have to happen, I pretty much can guarantee you, we're going to have to uh, loosen this screw here. Uh, we're going to have to run this all the way back through in here somehow. But I need to study the throttle linkage in the in the in the videos, and, that, and that's going to bolt right there onto that. And so every engine is going to be different, but for the most common engine, this here, this uh, what, what is this? The Harbor Freight uh, 2012 CC engine. Uh, you know, you just got to get the throttle linkage right, and going to mount that right there, or may mount it here. Seems like that's the most uh, give us the clearest thing. I'm going to need to loosen that up, and that may be all we need. And so I think this right here, I think I see where that other bolt was now. And so this is going to come out here and curve back around here. And I don't think we're going to have to disconnect anything. So let's get, to, let's get, some, let's get our tools and get that linked up. Probably going to be the easiest thing to do. We can just jerry rig it in there. Ah, there we go. See, that's what I was looking for. Hopefully, I wouldn't have to do anything crazy. And that came through. And so we're going to tighten that back down. And that's going to be a nice little clamp on there for that. And now it's just a matter of getting some tweezers. 
make sure we pull that tight yeah make sure we pull that tight and there's another let me see if I can find that small little piece of uh, uh, there's some other small screws that came into this kit somewhere I forget what they were for but I think it's part of the throttle linkage I just don't think I need that for this particular application because it automatically comes with that here and so uh, See how this is going to work. We're going to have to get a bolt in here. Let's see if that's a 10 millimeter. Exactly what it is. And so that's going to back this out. Sounds like a C130 up there. One of my favorite all time military planes. Although I do love the C17, but anyway, that's uh, besides the point. <laughs> One thing I love about sharing these videos, you get to share your life with people, and it uh, can be a fun thing, you know. And so what we're doing now is trying to get our throttle linkage going. And I think what I may do, just for my own sanity, we're going to take that out. Okay. We're going to run the cable through the throttle linkage there. Oh, come on. Get on through there. Yeah, we're just going to have to really loosen this up. That's what's going to have to happen. Just let you stay there. Back this out about as far as we care to, to dare. Because, again, I really don't want to have to go through the trouble there we go see and come on don't go slipping down now that that cables in there guess what we can run this back in here like we had it before this would definitely be a lot easier if I had taken off the uh, some th components but I don't really want to have to do all that right so now that that's in there and so so you know sometimes your motor may not come with all the throttle linkage stuff you need so you may need to buy some parts from a go-kart place uh, this motor came with it and the kit does come with this unit here I just don't need this unit uh, with this particular kit and so now what I need to do is get some pliers or something Pull that taut. Make sure that that's there. Make sure we pull this taut. Let me go get my pliers that I use for fishing. They should be here in the boat somewhere, but I'll be right. yep, here we go. Use these when I'm catfishing. So you just take your pliers, take the wire, pull it taut. We're going to tighten that back down. All right. Be careful. Come on now, don't give me all this trouble. You were working just fine a minute ago. We'll come here. We'll have to get our Okay, so see how that works. You need the 10 millimeter bolt there. You could use an extra set of hands, but as long as that's taut, we should be fine. I think the next step is we're going to have to loosen this unit here because there's, that way it can make it run as loose as it can be.
fought it as long as I could, guys, but <clears throat> we're going to have to take off the... Um, We're gonna have to break these lugs and take off the uh, take off the take off the. Uh... See now, I wish I had my exhaust upgrade because it would just be perfect. I could just, you know, just that's why I didn't want to have to do it. But but you know. Uh... I'm not sure if there's a gasket on this thing or not. Um... there is a gasket. It looks like there's two gaskets. Uh, but anyway, uh, I have uh, I am desperately, I'm definitely rather, looking forward to upgrading this engine. Uh, probably the coolest upgrade I've seen to this engine so far has been the exhaust system also sold by SPS the, um, the SPS North America the uh, okay it's just a 10 millimeter uh, bolt there so so those are those of you who are looking to upgrade your motors if you're gonna do the throttle linkage go ahead and put your cool air intake in your exhaust on there now because if you're gonna have to take it off you just as well replace it with the good stuff uh, but I'm gonna wait to do all that until uh, the reason I want to wait to do all that is because I want to make sure that uh, I get the, the engines broken in but I want to get some load on this engine and I want to get through that first oil change and once I get that that's when I'll start doing some modifications to the engine nothing crazy just just try to get it smooth, running a little bit smoother, those kinds of things. And so this is just simply the throttle, uh, uh, what, what does it call the throttle something or other? Throttle uh, unit, throttle nut, tension nut on the throttle uh, body. Yeah. Okay, so we may need to try to, well, we can probably just run it through like so, and uh, so we need to come back and loosen this up and uh, make that wasn't quite as taut as it could be, There's a little bit of play in it, so um, let's go back with our Just like the manual says, this is far easier when you actually... Yeah, that's what we need it to be. That's idle, completely at idle. So it does return, but that is nice because it's real light on the hand. I like that. Just, just really, that is comfortable, folks. Okay, so now what we need to do is tighten this up as well. That way you won't have all that slippage, any kind of slippage. So we'll tighten this up. And we are just about ready to run. The only thing we really need to do, that's, that's good enough. We may have to go get some more wire. I don't, I don't see that as being quite long enough. Although, let's see. Ah, oh, we need an Allen wrench. Okay, so uh, th this is our kill switch. This is a... This is... What you need. And so... 
you know what this what you'll do is when you're when you're riding you'll be just have this on your belt buckle if you get thrown from the thing from the from the motor um, that'll kill the motor it'll just kill the motor um, so this is an important safety feature that you heard me talking about and that'll make contact that'll make contact and you can go get through I mean you got to have that safety feature folks if you're going to be doing any kind of power motoring on the water on the open water you know you get thrown from the boat you know at least you can save your boat and won't get killed on that circle of death just type in circle of death you know boat motor accidents uh, people get killed all the time because they're just not running a kill switch on their motors I mean, it's just a simple piece of technology that'll save your life and uh, so it's worth having. Right, so be mindful it does fit on this smaller portion here, not back here, but right there. I'm going to put it as close as I can to the rear there. And then I'm going to try to re-thread here. Wiring the kill switch. Doesn't matter which goes where, but I'm going to take the short wire and ground it here to the bolt, take the long wire and, and wire it here to the, um, I'm going to connect it here to the uh, harness, we'll splice it into the harness somehow. You have to make your own harness, but instead of going to the store, I'm just going to probably start cutting and splicing. these off, take that off, don't need that anymore, and we'll just sharp knife, sharp knife, again we'll just strip the wire here, and I'll show you how I do it, very simple, like that, you got that one, I want to take this all, Basically twist it all together best you can, like so, and then get this guy on here. And that is a done deal, my friends. Thirteen six eight, thirteen sixteenths inch uh, little end cap bolt here. This is where the propeller will fit. A little bit. Of this unit came with two propellers. One propeller is a six and a quarter inch propeller the other propeller is a six and a half uh, so I'm going to put the larger propeller on and uh, <clears throat> I don't know there's a keyway there in the propeller there but I don't necessarily see a keyway here on this shaft oh there yes there is there's one on there yeah there is it's on the other side that's what it is uh, so it only goes on one way so you're going to put that on oh come on now just trying to make sure that we have that aligned properly there we go that's better all the way in there and lock washer and the bolt here I 
I guess it just fits snugly on there shouldn't be any forward or aft motion on that so I'm, so I'm gonna have to do something to figure out uh, exactly how figure out exactly how to get that to sit down with the manual here a little bit come on we're not doing that the right way come on Feel it pulling against the motor, and it's kind of funny. I'm not sure why that's doing that. So we need to check that out because that forward aft motion there is that, that's that's no good. So if you have it. Any fore or aft motion, what that means is the outer shaft is not jammed in there far enough. What you need to do is loosen everything up, jam that on in there, and then tighten down. And then you'll be all right. Make sure the Turks are up here. And there's got to be some sort of a way to align that. Because you don't want that to be sitting there like that. It'll just be misery for the rest of your life, you know. So... I'm just going to sort of eyeball it there. And then we'll tighten this. There. There. I'm going to let that down. And I'm saying, that's just hand tightening. And we'll get our, get your big wrench here. Oh, come on, you got to be kidding me. Righty tighty. <laughs> Put a tightening on it. That's what my granddad would always say. Put a tightening on it. Put a tightening on it. If you tighten one, you're going to end up... There's no, no forward aft motion now, so the problem's corrected. Alright. We are done. Project complete. Check, we got gas, fuel is on, yes, carburetor is set to start, I'm going to let it pull it a few times, like so, alright, There she is. There's a propeller running. Don't put your hand in it. Testing out the new motor here. It should crank up. Yeah, it 
wash it, crank it up. All right, folks, this is doing pretty well. One thing I definitely recommend is, yeah, you need to have some kind of a rope here uh, that's going to prevent, if you just let it stay like this, that's just going to fall all the way back down in the water like that. You don't want that. So you need to have some kind of a rope that's going to just keep it right here. Now, I had these ropes here, but they just didn't seem to really, I couldn't get them tied on uh, correctly. or not I need something that's going to be bolted maybe down here to the eye uh, I think they've just turned on the current on the at the dam and there's a lot of wind so we've got a lot of wind and waves here so far I'm satisfied you can see all that dust that I was talking about during the build uh, gosh now I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with it we have our uh, kill switch here and so I'm having to hold this by hand it, the, the strange sensation with these uh, with this motor that I've not felt with anything else is uh, you have a it's not only just a left and right motion which is also too you can use this as a as a as an oar but there's up and down I mean you, you know there be you know you'll come into a wave you, you have to tilt it down a little bit more you come up over a wave you have to bring it up a little more. And so there's up-down motion as opposed to just left and right. So this is a very different dynamic. Uh, see, right now, to me, that's sitting too far back. I think I need to turn this whole thing around so it comes forward. But then again, I'm not sure how that would change. That would probably increase the center of gravity on the whole boat. That may be where it needs to be. I think really what I need to do is just figure out a way to, uh, you know, go ahead and... Uh, run these uh, the thing the, uh, the 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 rope on it but you know honestly you can just kind of oh, come on now oh yeah need to put this on but anyway you get the picture I'm gonna change uh, things here give me a second uh, don't ever get on the on a river without having a uh, a fire extinguisher you know as you can see down there and a kill switch it's for your own safety folks you, you gotta you gotta have safety is very important and so that's uh, kill switch there motors on and there we go there we go as you can see you just put that down in the water you can just troll with it